There's been a few different 1176 compressors over the years, but what's the difference between them and which one should you choose? This video is sponsored by DistroKid. Follow the VIP link in the description down below to get 7% off an already amazing price to distribute your music to the world. The 1176 compressor has seen a lot of revisions since its introduction in 1967, but not all of them are that significant, to be honest with you. So in today's video, we're going to focus on the one ones you're most likely to come across so that you can make a decision about which one is best for your production. Now there's a lot of plug-in versions available for this compressor. I've got versions from Arturia, IK Multimedia and Native Instruments and they're all very good to be honest with you. I'll put links for those in the description down below. But in this video I've chosen to use the Universal Audio versions because those are closest to the original hardware. Now before we we get into the differences between the revisions I reckon it's really important to fully understand the controls which are common for all of the 1176s. You can tell when the 1176 is switched off because well the off button is engaged on the right hand side. We can switch it on using any of the three buttons above and each of these will change the behavior of the VU meter. So for example if we were to either select the plus four or the plus eight button the VU meter meter will be showing the output of the unit. The plus 4 indicates that when the needle is on 0 we'll have a plus 4 dB output and the plus 8 refers to a plus 8 dB output when the needle's on 0. Selecting GR above puts us in gain reduction mode. In this case the needle will default to 0 and will move to the left when there's some gain reduction happening. Let's have a listen to some acoustic guitar and see how much gain reduction we're getting at the moment. And as you can see, absolutely none. And that's because our material is so quiet, it's not getting up above the threshold. Now the threshold is super important on a compressor. Once we go above the threshold, then we apply gain reduction. But where's the threshold control? Well, there isn't one on 1176. That's because it has a fixed threshold. So what we have to do is increase the volume in this case, or the gain of our material, to at least get some of it above that threshold to get some gain reduction. And we do that by using the input control. So let's play that guitar again. Again, and this time I'm going to push the input control up and keep an eye on that VU meter to see the gain reduction. Okay, so we've got some gain reduction happening. But of course, we've also made everything quite a lot louder as well. And that's not necessarily a good thing when you're setting up your compressor. When things are louder, they just tend to sound better anyway. And we don't want to be distracted by that. We want to hear the nature of the compression. So in order to turn things back down again, we use the output control. Now, this doesn't affect the nature of the compression at all. It simply turns things down, just like a volume control on your stereo system. So I'm going to adjust that now and have another listen. And at this stage, I just want to kind of make sure it's sounding about the same level as it was before we use the compressor at all. So I briefly will switch the compressor off, have a listen. And then switch it on again using the gain reduction button. I've probably gone a bit too far with the volume, with the output volume there, so I'll just turn it up a little bit just to make sure it roughly matches. Now, in order to change the real character of the compression that we've got here, there's two really important groups of controls. First of all, the timing controls here, attack and release, and then the ratio controls over here. Let's start off by looking at the timing controls. One really important thing to note about the attack and release controls on 11. 
176 is the way they actually work. With both of these controls, if we turn them down or counterclockwise, we're setting a slower timing. And if we turn them up or clockwise, we're setting a faster timing. I mention this because on some other compressors, it works in an opposite way to this, and that may confuse you. Now, in terms of actual timing, our attack ranges from 20 microseconds to 800 microseconds. Notice I emphasize microseconds here it's not milliseconds both of these timings are very fast indeed if you want a compressor with a fast attack on it then 1176 is a pretty good choice now release times range from 50 milliseconds through to 1100 milliseconds or 1.1 seconds now notice i sound like i'm being really precise about this but there is a bit of a caveat to these release times which we're going to talk about later and indeed it does slightly vary from one model to another but before we get into all that i just want to make some adjustments to my acoustic guitar now i want to control the transients of this acoustic guitar that loudest part at the beginning of each note when I pluck the string, I want to make sure they're not too loud. So I want to clamp down on them pretty quickly. So I'm going to set a fast attack time. But I don't want the sound to be compressed for too long. These are pretty short transients. So I'm also going to set the release time pretty quick as well so that we're not affecting the rest of the performance. Let's have a listen to those settings that I've dialed in there. <laughs> Now I like this setting already because I'm controlling those transients, but I can't really hear it. It's not something that I'm aware of as a listener. And for, for acoustic guitar particularly, I'm pretty happy with that kind of sound. Now one thing to note about when you're using fast attack and release times is you can sometimes introduce distortion, especially when you've got bass heavy signals, when you've got lots of low frequencies. Let's have a listen to this bass guitar part I've prepared, and I've got some simple settings applied here. Let's have a listen to how it is before I add much attack and release. Now let's go super extreme. I'll turn the attack all the way up and the release all the way up. Have a listen. And you can probably hear that distortion. Now that may be something you actually like. You like that sort of grittiness, in which case you can just leave those settings as they are. But if you notice that you've got that on something where you don't want it, perhaps on some vocals that you want to keep pretty clean, for example, then what I would suggest is just back off on those release and attack times a little bit, especially the release I find makes the biggest difference, but also the attack as well. So if we back this off a little bit and have a listen to this bass again. There's still pretty fast timings, but we're not getting that distortion. The ratio buttons determine how much gain reduction is applied once the signal goes over the threshold. Our most gentle setting is four to one here. We've also got eight to one, 12 to one, all the way up to 20 to one, which is close to limiting. In most cases, you would be using between four and 12 to one. Now, early on with the hardware, engineers discovered that they could depress all buttons at the same time, creating what is called the all button mode. Now, most plugins that I've seen replicate this, but implement it in a slightly different way. With this particular plugin, you'd start off by selecting one of the extreme buttons, say the 20 to one button here, holding shift, and then holding the four to one button. So that implements the all button button mode. Now this mode not only messes with the ratio, which ends up between 12 and 20 to one, but also with the attack and release times as well. And it creates a sort of a unique sounding distortion. Let's have a listen to our bass guitar, starting off with a four to one ratio, and then I'll switch to the all button mode. Thank you. 
So you can hear a definite change in the overall tone of this. There's a little bit more distortion there as well. And basically, this is very useful if you want a grittier sound or something which is much more upfront. Can be useful, say, for vocals if you want them to be kind of in your face, for example. Now, we often hear people talking about the all button mode with the 1176, but there are other combinations you can experiment with as well to get different tones. On this particular plugin, you get them with the shift key. So I could, for example, uh, press four to one and eight to one as well, or I could press say eight to one and then press 20 to one to engage the top three buttons. They all have different characteristics to them. So it's worth experimenting with them. I don't know if all of these combinations are available on other plugins, but certainly you do get all of the same combinations on this plugin, which affect the tone on the hardware as well. Up until now, we've only been looking at the so-called blackface version of the 1176, so-called because of its black face plate. Now this covers revisions from C through to G. So there are a couple of versions before this that look quite different. Revisions A and B are called the blue stripe versions for obvious reasons. Now, if we actually compare them alongside each other, you'll see there's no actual difference in the controls. There's no extra features added or anything like that. Once you know how to work one, you know how to work the other. Now, there is another version that we're going to look at later on, which does have a difference in features. But before we get to that, let's look at the differences between these two. Well, the main difference, apart from the blue stripe and the black face, is a difference in sound. The blue stripe version is known to be more aggressive and raw sounding compared to later versions. And it also adds more harmonic distortion as well. And you can particularly hear that if you drive it hard on things like sort of vocals, guitar and drums also happens to be a bit noisier, whereas the black face, the later version, is a bit more transparent and clean. Now, there is actually a difference in the release times or the release behavior, I should say. But in order to understand that, we're going to have to talk about something called program dependent release. We tend to think of release times as the time that it takes for the gain reduction to return back to zero once the signal fell below the threshold. In other words, how long it takes the compressor to stop compressing. And earlier on, I quoted some specific numbers for the 1176. But in reality, it's a little bit more complicated and variable than that because all 1176s use something called program dependent release meaning the release time is going to depend on the audio that it's processing. So there's two different ways it's going to approach this. First of all, it's going to listen for quick transients, something like, say, a snare. If it hears a snare drum or a quick transient like that, it's going to employ a quick release time. But if it hears a much more sustained signal, like you'd get from, say, a bass guitar or something, it's going to employ a slower release time. Now, there's something called transition time. This is the amount of time that the signal is kept in compression, and it sort of determines which type of release it's going to use. And the transition time for a blue stripe is different to that of, say, a black face, which means they do release slightly differently to each other. Now, the blue stripe is known to be a little less predictable and is a little bit more likely to produce pumping effects, but it does respond much quicker. Well, not much quicker, but quicker. Now, the black face, on the other hand, is a lot more predictable and less likely to produce those pumping effects. This might be important to you if you're choosing between the two. Now, in a moment, I'm going to tell you about a version of the 1176, which does actually have some different controls. But before we get into that, I want to remind you, if you're releasing your music to platforms like Spotify, Amazon, Google Play, etc., don't forget to check out the sponsor of this video, DistroKid. If you follow that VIP link in the description down below, you'll get 7% off of your first year of membership. So we saw that these two revisions look distinctly different. 
There's another look that you may see around. This is the sort of silver face version. And with revision H here, the main difference was that they introduced a new amp at the input stage. They introduced what's called an op amp, and essentially it made it sound a lot cleaner. But none of the actual controls change still at this stage. The most notable revision in terms of features or control changes is the AE version that we can see here. Notice that it's got two things going on. It's got a combination of the look of the black face with the blue stripe of the earlier versions. And the AE here is both representing the fact that it's from an earlier version and a later version and also stands for anniversary edition. This was a limited edition hardware version. Now the two main things that are different with it are with the ratio and the attack times. With the ratio, they introduced a two to one ratio, making it a lot more gentle. So for great for sort of tracking vocals or something where you just want a slight amount of gain reduction. They also introduced a much slower attack time. Now on the hardware, you would get to that by dialing um, the knob all the way counterclockwise to get to a slow attack time of 10 milliseconds. But here on the plugin, you can get to it just by clicking on the slow label here to engage that much slower attack time. So that's quite a significant difference in terms of the flexibility of this actual version. Now it also has the all button functionality, but on the hardware at least, you get to it in a different way. Um, you actually press the top three buttons rather than all four buttons to get to the all button mode. Now whether they've implemented that on the plugin version, I'm not sure, but I do believe that's how you do it on the hardware version, but you'd be lucky to have a hardware version. It was very limited edition. I think that they only made about 500 of these. So congratulations to you if you've got an AE version in terms of hardware. Now there are a few controls we've seen here in this video, which are only applicable to the universal audio plugins. I'm just going to quickly go through those now in case you're wondering what they are. First of all, we have a mix control. So this enables us to blend the original signal with the compressed signal and is a quick way of sort of getting some parallel compression. You'll probably see that on quite a lot of other plugins as well. Next, we have the headroom control. So essentially with this, we're adjusting the internal workings of the compressor so that we can introduce both compression and distortion at a different level, if you like. So you may have your input level set, you're getting a nice um, amount of compression, but you just want to tweak it a bit. And for that, you can use the headroom control. So let me play that acoustic guitar again, and I'll push this up and you'll hear the difference right away. <laughs> So you can hear that it's compressing much, much more as I turn that up. And there's also, as I say, some distortion introduced as well. Now, something which is uh, applicable to this specific plugin, but also it shares functionality with the hardware as well, is the ability to switch the attack off. So on the plugin here, you can click on the off button below attack and it switches it off. I think on the hardware you do it just by dragging the control all the way counterclockwise. And what that does is it means that there's really no compression happening, but you can use the plugin to add sort of color and tone to your signal without actually compressing it. And then finally, just below the release knob, you can see this kind of uh, slash symbol here. What this does is it introduces a low cut filter to the side chain. Now the side chain is like the detection circuit within the compressor itself. So where it's determining when to compress or not. Now this won't make any actual difference to the sound in terms of it won't cut out low frequencies, but it will cut out the low frequencies in terms of what that detection circuit is hearing. And therefore the compressor won't respond as much to low frequencies. And that can be very, very handy indeed. A quick Trivia question for you. Which one is older, the 1176 or me? 
Let me know your rather useless answers in the comments down below, along with any more useful things you might have to say. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate it. My name is Mike, and I hope you're well.